Hello, Saints family and friends, and especially to my youth all over the world. We want to thank you for tuning in with us once again to the Christian's Endeavor YouTube station. Today's lesson is going to be coming out of the International Sunday School book, and the text background is going to be taken out of Psalm 100. Yes, Psalm 100. We're going to do it in its entirety. What is it going to talk about today? It's going to talk about how and why we must, and I'm going to say that again, we must give God praise. May I ask you a question? Is God happy with your praise? I want you to think about that. All right, well, our lesson, the topic is praise God with joy. And our key text or our key verse is Psalm 100 and the third verse. And it reads, Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people, and the sheep of His pasture. We're going to pray and go right into our lesson for today. Father God, we thank you for another wonderful opportunity to be able to glean of your word. Father God, we thank you for our youth. We thank you for the message that you're going to send to them after the hearing of this word. Father God, we just thank you because with breath in our body, we all have the opportunity to be able to give you the praise that is not just due to you, but the praise in which you require. So, Father God, I ask that you would just anoint your servant. Allow me to be able to teach this lesson with clarity so that the hearer will not only understand, but they will be convicted and also provoked to be able to do what is required within your word today. Father God, again, we thank you, and this is our prayer. We thank you in advance. Amen and amen. So, once again, the topic, the topic, excuse me, of our lesson is praise God with joy. The lesson text is going to be the King James Version, and I'll be reading the entirety of Psalm 100. Um, just a few things about that book of Psalm. Um, it has 150 psalms. Um, those psalms is a combination of uh, songs, um, poetry, poems, uh, prayers, and petitions. Um, Praises, yeah, and it's almost like um, you have various writers in this that makes up this book of Psalms, and all of their entries were like combined to make up the 150 Psalms that we see. It's almost like we had a chance to get their journal entries. You know how you can journal uh, your thoughts, your thoughts. Um, you journal concerns, you journal good times, you journal um, prayers, things that you want to come to pass. It's almost like we got to hold it over in this book of Psalm. Um, in some Bibles, you will see Psalm in the singular. Some you will find the S on the end. Um, but when we reference the Psalm, whatever number in between 1 and 150 that you see, um, we do it not with identifying that particular number psalm as a chapter um, because the psalm is a collection of writers rather than just one writer with a bunch of chapters. Okay, so when we, for instance, identify the 100 psalm, we say it just like that. 100, I'll be reading or I'm going to be referencing the 100 psalm. I'll be referencing the 75th Psalm um, versus blah, 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 or in its entirety. 
All right. So in this particular book, it's like that. Once again, because it has various writers, and so you won't, you don't just want to group them all and say chapters. Okay. All right. Um, what else can I tell you about this book of Psalm? Um, we reference it. This is, um, you know, how long this book, or let's say the journal entries or the writings um, from that groups in this book of Psalms start all the way back with Moses. Um, we just learned like a few weeks ago within an international lesson how Moses uh, had wrote an actual psalm of praise. And it talked about how God had brought the Israelites out of Egypt by way of the Red Sea. Um, so this goes all the way back as early as Moses. Um, David, we know David, King David, uh, he is attributed to writing most of the psalm. Just so you can kind of note that. Um, then you have uh, a few folks um, in Ezra's time. They wrote, uh, you have, who else? Uh, some other people, about three or four other people. Uh, you have Moses, as I said, but um, just kind of key in that David is attributed to at least 73 of the psalm. Some of the psalms are anonymous, um, and, and they, don't, they don't even tell you who wrote it. Um, even some of those anonymous psalms, they are saying, maybe contribute to David, David as well. Um, so we just want to uh, just note the fact that uh, the book of Psalms and its writings are attributed to various writers, okay? And so um, with that being said, it's a wonderful book um, to encourage us because we see all faucets of life when we read through these songs, we see people in happy times, sad times, in praise, when they were afraid, when they were praying to God that God would avenge them of their enemies. Um, we just see all kind of things. So that's why this book is uh, also so referenced um, by believers because whatever state that we are in, at most times we're able to find a song that will complement our mode, okay? And what we are going through. So we ask that, you know, in your spare time, go through this book of Psalm, okay? Because there's some very essential writings in here that will help you along your way um, as a believer, okay? So today, again, we have only five verses. You know, every believer that is some way versed in the Word of God this is a very familiar passage of uh, the scriptures, this 100th Psalm. And it has five verses, but you know what? These five verses are kind of like in depth um, because it gives us specific details and instructions on how we must praise God and why we must praise God. Oftentimes, people don't praise God and give Him His just due praise uh, because they don't know the instructions. Either they don't know the instructions or they don't believe in God or they're just choosing to be disobedient. Okay? So we want to clear this up today because this is a major concept and principle in our relationship to our God. We must praise Him. Yes, we must praise Him. We are His people and we must praise him, okay? Where else is he going to get the praise from? Huh? Okay. Yes. He gave us a voice. He gave us breath in our body and in our lungs. Hey, we give other things praise and shouts out and we cheer for other things. Well, Exodus, uh, in Exodus, I believe the 34th chapter says that God is a jealous God. Yeah. Hey, did you know that? God is a jealous God. Hmm, who would have knew? But he does not um, want us to be giving all these other things and other people praise, but then be silent when it comes to him. Okay? So we got to make sure we give this praise as proper regulation in our lives. Okay? All right. So let's go ahead and get into our word. I'm going to read our entire text first. 
And then we're just going to come back and we're going to talk about it a bit. I'm going to try not to hold you long, okay? Because this is, again, a focused message to my youth. Because the enemy, even today and throughout time, has focused in on trying to choke out the praise that will come from our young people's mouths and from their heart and from their living. Because even in our living, we praise God. Okay, it's not just about an audible thing. It's about what you do. It's about who you are. Okay, that is praise. All right, it lies in all three of them. What you say, what you do, and who you are. All right, so we got to get this right, okay? And so today, once again, our focus is going to be on youth. I already met with my youth in person, but I hadn't had time to get my video uploaded for my youth all over the world. So I pray that you will be blessed by this lesson today. And please drop us a comment. If this lesson and anything we're going to discuss in here resonates with you. And to answer the question, do you think God is happy with the praise that you currently give him? And if you don't think he's happy, why? And what are you going to do to work on it, okay? All right, because this lesson is a very responsive lesson. It's going to go out through the teaching. But then it's going to be on you to do something about it, okay? What are you going to do? with this lesson content today. So here is the text. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. Bless his name. Why? For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen and amen. So at the outset, as we break down these verses, I want you to know this. If you got your pen, if you got your highlighter, get ready. Get your Bibles out. If you don't already have your Bible, where's the Bible? And this is why you need some paper. You need some paper. Yes, because paper will allow you to be able to make better notes so that when you go back to this psalm and you flip those pages, you'll be able to actually see the highlight. You can make your little notations, make it personal. And that's how you grow in the word of God. All right. Nothing against the tablets, but the tablets just don't afford you the time or the space or the opportunity uh, much of the time to be able to take immediate notes when you are hearing and being taught the word of God. So you need to be able to have some type of paper or either if you want to mark up your Bible, I encourage you to do it, okay? It's nothing like making personal notations that you can be able to go back to. So let's look at verse 1. When we're talking about making a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, what is joyful? Joyful is praise. When we say we praise in God or we're making a joyful noise, that means that we are glad about the noise that we're making. We can be making noise by, um, we can sing, certainly, yes, we can sing when we say be joyful, but everybody don't know how to sing. Everybody don't know how to hold a tune. So is God going to rule you out because you're not able to sing or hold a note? No. When you're joyful, you're joyful, first of all, in your heart. You are happy about what it is that you're doing. You're thankful to be able to do this thing. So it says, make a joyful noise, a happy noise unto the Lord. You know, a lot of times we make noise without making noise. Can I say that? You can make noise in your spirit. 
You can be complaining in your spirit. You can be grumbling in your spirit. You can be aggrieved in your spirit. Making noise that God can hear. People may not be able to hear it, but God can hear it. And it's not joyful. That's not the kind of noise that he want to hear. Who wants to hear that kind of noise, by the way, right? But he tells you with a commandment as the first word. That word, make. He's not giving you an option. If you're going to praise God with joy, here's how he's telling you to do it. Make, that's the commandment, a joyful noise. Unto who? Unto the Lord God, okay? All right, he says, all ye lands. All ye lands, all ye lands, 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 yes. Okay, so here's where the lands is. Let me break that down for you. He's not just talking about creation. He's talking about the best of his creation first. They have the highest priority to praising God. Who is that? Us. The ones that have breath, his breath in their body. As Psalm 150 says, the last verse says, Praise ye the Lord. The second verse to the end of that says, Let everything that hath breath, everything that hath breath. Is he talking about a rock? No. Is he talking about trees? Do trees have breath? No. Is he talking about an egg or some type of food have breath? No. Who has breath? Us. Right? Nod your head. Give me a thumbs up. If you if, if you do if you say it amen, by now you should have already given me a thumbs up. Okay? Alright, be fed. Thumbs up. So he's saying, all ye lands. And guess what? Now he also says over here in the scripture, where is that scripture at? It's actually in the New Testament. And I think it's over in the book of Luke. Where he says that if you don't, if the people don't praise him, that even the rocks will cry out. Can you imagine that? Are you going to let a rock cry out for you? Huh? When God is giving you a voice, when God is giving you lungs and air in your lungs to be able to make a joyful sound, are you going to let some trees wave and wave up a praise? Or, the, or a rock to be able to cry out. By the way, how would a rock cry out? I don't know. But anyway, you get my point? Okay, so that's incumbent upon us as God's people. Because we can breathe, right? We have breath in our body, all right? So, verse 2 says, and here's your second commandment. Serve. Somebody say serve. You need to highlight that. Underline it. Because he wants you to serve the Lord with gladness. Once again, you need to be joyful about what it is that you're going to do for the Lord. He don't want you doing nothing grumbling and complaining or out of obligation. He wants you to be free about serving him. Happy to serve him. Right? It is a privilege to be able to serve the Lord with gladness. And he wants you to come before his presence, come before his presence, come into his space, come into his church, talk about him, because his presence is around us, yes, everywhere we go. So we are always in his presence, and you need to be able to be singing. Once again, am I talking literally about singing? No, but you can have a medley on your heart. You can be joyful and glad and just humming on your heart. Whatever you do, you can be tapping on a desk and still be thinking about the Lord, okay? And in his presence, because don't you know that God inhabits the praises of his people? In other words, he loves to live in the presence, in the space of people who think about him and talk highly about him. Right? When you bless him, you bless his name, you magnify him. God is a, you're almost like a bonfire. And he loves the heat and the fire that's raging in the bonfire of your words and in your heart. And he comes up and just sits right on down in the midst of that because he loves to be talked about. Well of. Yes. So 
He tells you to serve the Lord, whatever you're going to do. If you have um, uh, jobs that's in the church, maybe you're an usher, maybe you are in the choir, maybe you may help your parents to clean up the church, um, whatever it is. If you're going to do it and you're doing it for God, do it with gladness. Please do it with gladness. All right? Do it with gladness. Verse 3 says, here's your third commandment. Actually, your fourth. Because in that second verse, it says, serve. And then it says, come before the Lord, come before his presence with singing. So that's three commandments thus far. When you get to verse 3, here's your fourth commandment. It says, no. Please underline it. Highlight it. Know that the Lord, he is God. How will you know that the Lord, He is God? Know in your spirit. Know up here in your intellect. You know this by reading His Word. By hearing His Word. That's why it's so important that you come to church. And when you come to church, pay attention. Pay attention. Yes. You can't be playing around in church. You can't be on your cell phone in church. You can't be asleep in church and thinking you're going to learn anything about the Lord. That's not serving him well. Because you came to church for a purpose, for a reason. Not for you, but you came to serve him. And your attention serves him. So when you are paying attention... And you're doing it with gladness. That's serving God. That's another way that we serve God. Huh? I'm just a messenger. Don't shoot me. Okay? So it says, Know ye that the Lord, He is. Not was, but He is. This is present tense. He is God. You got to know it. It is He that has made us. He made you. Yes, He did. Your parents didn't make you. It was God that blessed your parents to make you and deliver you. But ultimately, your creation and your creator is God. Okay? He made us and not we ourselves. Many people pat themselves on the back. They think that because they have matriculated or they have success in life that they made themselves. Look at what I, 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 I did. My, I, all of the personal uh, pronouns, but no, it's not about us. The scripture says we live and move and have our being in him because of him, okay? Don't get it twisted. Yeah, we are not ourselves. We are his people. The Bible is declaring. He, they let you, the word is letting you know. Okay? You don't belong to yourself. God brought you. If it wasn't for him redeeming you, redeeming you, saving you, allowing you to have life, you'd be out of here. You wouldn't even have been thought of. You wouldn't be here. You would be gone. Okay? So we got to give God the proper due, his just due of glory. We got to give him the preeminence. We got to give him our allegiance. Yes? He says, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Now, we got to look at that. We the sheep of his pasture. We not sheep. Yeah, we are. Because without him being the shepherd, and not just the shepherd, but the good shepherd, what does the shepherd do for the sheep? The shepherd protects the sheep. The shepherd leads the sheep. The shepherd provides for the sheep. Leads them to water, leads them to food. The shepherd cleanses the sheep. Okay? So we are God's sheep. He does all of those wonderful things for us. So why not give him praise with joy? Hmm? Verse 4 says, Enter. Here's another command. Highlight it, underline it, circle it, do what you got to do. But he is telling you to enter. That means to come in. That means when you come to church, you're coming in. You're walking into his presence. When you are sitting at your desk and you start to think about God, you're actually coming into his presence. His presence is going to surround you because it's like a signal that goes out to him that 
He is on your mind. Yeah. But it says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. So you got this enter and after you enter and come into his presence or have him on your mind, what are you supposed to be doing? A few things. Giving him thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is words of adoration. Yes, it's speaking highly of him. What has he done for you? Huh? What has he done for all God's people since the beginning of time? The very fact that you're watching me right now tells me that he has given you health and strength. You still have life. You still have a breath of uh, life into your body. Hmm? So God is already blessing you. So therefore we must bless him back. One way that we bless him back is to thank him. It, it, it says also to bless his name. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you. Okay. Hallelujah is one of the highest levels of praise that we can audibly say to him. Okay. Just be right. As I said, praise is not just what we say, but it is what we do. And it is who we are. When you come into his presence, when you come into the church, be prepared to give him your best. Be prepared to give him your mental attention. Be prepared to get engaged in the service of praise and worship unto him. You got to be prepared, okay? How is it that when, you know, and I'm going to give you this example. I really want you to think about it. Be honest. You know, we have sports teams that we like. Some of you may also be on a sports team. What do you do when this famous sports team that you're really interested in and you like, when they're playing, what do you do? In advance, in advance, hear me, in advance, you get your ticket or you reserve your seating. You invite others to come with you. Hey, can you come? You want to go to the game? You want to see them? Huh? Or you want to come and see me play? You invite people. You enjoy people to join you there. Yes. You try to get a front seat so you can see everything. Huh? You go and you plan ahead of time what you're going to wear, what kind of um dedicated clothing and paraphernalia that you're going to bring to the game. And this kind of represents our instruments that you know in church we have instruments we have our our tools that we want to use to praise God and magnify him with we want to exaggerate everything so you go to this game and you make preparation and you don't even know if these jokers is gonna win the game but you do all of this preparation in advance with a hope and an expectation that they're going to please you and that they're going to be pleased with you because you're going to be in the bleachers cheering for them. You're going to be their cheerleader, right? And you do all of this in advance. You make noise when they score. You just flip out. You stand up. You turn around. You wave your number one. You wave your flags. But when you get to church, you ghost. You zombie. You cricket. Is God happy with that praise? He's not. And in the beginning, I told you God is a jealous God. If you put in anything and given anything more glory and praise than you're giving God, then in, uh, technically, you're idolizing that thing. And don't you know that idol, idolizing or worshiping or praising idols? Above God is a sin. It's a major sin. Okay? Let me back up. That verse 3 says, Know ye that the Lord is God. Do you know that the Lord is God? If you don't know that, but you know all of this other stuff, that's ignorance. That's will for ignorance. Why don't you know when his word is here, it's open for everybody to be able to read about him and learn about him. If you're failing to do that, that's an issue also. Because now you're telling me that you're failing to, to gain knowledge about God. 
Do you believe who he is? Do you believe what he has stated here in his word? If you don't believe it and if you don't comply with it, that's unbelief. That's another problem. That's another sin. Okay? So this, this particular psalm here, we got to be careful. We read this and we just mosey on through it. It's five verses. Everybody think it's all great. He is good. But when you don't lend yourself to what this psalm is telling you to do, then in fact you are actually disobeying God's word. And there are consequences for that. There are consequences when you don't give God the praise exactly as he has told you to give him praise. God is very detailed, as I told you. He's very explicit and specific about what it is that he wants us to do. And he expects us to follow. Yes. When we don't do it, we are in violation. Do you want to be in violation? Are you big enough to be in violation? I don't think so. Okay. So, I hope you're getting this, because this is very essential. I'm going to read that fifth verse, and we just about done. This is why you need to do it. You know, we started out talking about what needs to be done, which is how to make a, a joyful praise. We talked about who needs to do it. Uh, verse 3 and verse 5 is telling us why we need to do it. Verse uh, 4 talks about how we needed to do it again. All right. So verse 5 says, why do, you, why do we need to praise God with joy? Mm -hmm. Here it is. Here it is. Boom. Here it is. For the Lord is good. That's the first reason. The Lord is good. I'm going to ask you a question. Be honest. Isn't he good? Isn't he good? He's not just good. Seriously. He is great. He is like magnificent. He's the bomb. Dot com. What fault can you find in God? Really? There is no fault. There's no failure. Okay? So, God is good to his mercy, his undeserving goodness towards us. Uh, God favors us. When we don't deserve it, he favored all the way back the children of Israel. He favored them. They cut up and carried on. They forsook God. God was merciful to them. He forgave them. He blessed them. He took care of their enemies. God's mercy is everlasting. Hey, that same mercy is applicable to us, to me, and to you today. And the last part of this fifth verse says, and his truth. Where is his truth? It's in his word. His truth is in his word. I'm going to tell you again. How do you know about his truth? His word. His promises are in his word. What he says he's going to do is in his word. And it endures to all generations. What is that? It echoes ooh, 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 to every generation. Even people that are not even born God's word will be here. His promises will still be constant and stable and consistent even when they arrive here on earth. Okay? So as long as there are people on the earth, God's word to the people, to the people, everywhere, everybody. This is applicable to everybody. Did you know that? This Psalm 100 is not just talking about believers. It's not just talking about saints. It's not just talking about the saved. It's talking about every individual that has breath in their body. They are living off of the breath of God. And so therefore, they owe God a praise. You need to drop that praise like it's hot. Like right now. Yesterday. Last week. Last year. You should have been dropping some praises for God. Why? Because he is worthy of your praise. He is worthy of it. Yes, he is. So, this pretty much concludes this breakdown of this Psalm 100. We just want to let you know that it is your responsibility. I don't care how old you are. They have babies that are praising God, putting their hands together, singing a joyful noise. They dancing. They clapping. They got little tambourines. They banging on stuff when they hear the music. And the joy of the Lord, when they see examples before them, their parents, um, and they see images before them clapping and praising, they join right in, okay? 
They don't, they don't just sit on the sidelines and watch. I encourage you not to sit on the sidelines and watch. Your praise is valuable, not just to God, but it's also valuable to your account, okay? When you praise God, trust me, you storing up some dividends that one day you may have to cash in on, okay? So start giving God your best praise today. Find a way to praise him. The next time you enter into the doors of the church, be ready. Go to sleep. Get your rest on the Saturday or the Friday before you go and worship God, okay? And give him a, your best praise. Be enthusiastic about it. If you put on your little headphones, crank up some music, get into it on purpose. Be intentional about your praise, okay? Because God in heaven sees it and he loves it and he will reward you openly for being a praiser. Just like David. You know how he blessed David's life? But you know what? One thing to David's account he had, he was a praiser. He was a worshiper. Okay? So if you really want to be on top of your game, don't reserve your praise. Don't limit your praise. Do it as unto God. You ain't got to explain nothing to nobody. Okay? Just do it because it's right to do and again, God is worthy. So, I want to thank you again for tuning in with me, Minister Coleman, the Christian's Endeavor YouTube station. Again, the comment section is there. Please drop us a comment. If you said amen, give us a thumbs up. So again, we thank you for tuning in and giving us your attention to this lesson today. We want you to have a very blessed day week ahead and remember to give God your best praise with joy. Bye-bye.